All right, before we get into the retro review for the week, let's take a look back at the Observer around the time. We're going to go back to April 26, 1999, Tony. Yes, that's where this episode of the Monday Night Raw is on that Yeah, that is date, this exact so. episode. So I'm going to do some for that, and I'm going to do some for the week after. Just get a little, sure. uh, little bounce around. Nothing too much here, but there's a lot of actually weird ones here um okay so as i said april 26 1999 observer there have been several bounce checks again over the past two weeks starting a lot of rumors about the company being one step away from the grave what company do you think this is dody uh, wcw probably. No, <laughs> it is actually ecw Sean. i'm surprised you didn't go it's immediately TNA if brian alvarez <laughs> is writing this it's not <laughs> he, like, <laughs> he pre-hated tna before it existed probably. uh this is ecw of course paul Heyman again met with the wrestlers on april 17th and said that everything would be okay financially in another month since he said that before the confidence in those statements is pretty low but it doesn't appear that people are looking to leave because of the fear that if they leave now and Heyman winds up in power in wwf or wcw and they pick the company he winds up in and they walked out on him they'd be buried wcw was definitely very interested in talking with Heyman about helping book and write television i didn't know i don't know how true that is but that sounds crazy that that doesn't seem right that doesn't right? sound <laughs> fucking right at all unless, that sounds insane he, just, he probably just lied he actually just told really Meltzer that, that. <laughs> he, no, he pro- no i think he probably actually liked wcw he was just telling all these ECW guys like yeah i hate yeah, wcw fu- fuck them <laughs> you know if someone offered him a bunch of money he'd join them yeah probably God, I, I would have loved to see how Heyman booked Horace Hogan. That would have been fucking what awesome. What the hell? <laughs> Speaking of Heyman, by the way, Heyman himself said he was very close to accepting a loan from the WWF, and if he doesn't make a video game deal soon, he may be forced into it, but said a deal with a claim for a game to come out during the Christmas season that would take the company out of debt, which would include a major advance, and a loan is close to finalization. Uh, as we know, the, they do close a video game deal, they get two of them, uh, but then a claim kind of gets stock in the company, and then they owe ECW money, or ECW owes them money, something, all, e- uh, money in ECW really never went hand So the video hand. game deal helped them, but then it hurt them, is that what you're telling me? Pretty much, yeah, like, they made money on the game, but, like, they also, I, I think there's a note here after this, maybe on the next week's Observer, okay. um, yeah, yeah. about that, so we can get into okay. that after. Um, this is... F- it, crazy. I don't know if I've ever heard this one. Kevin Nash proposed an idea of a new horseman group with himself, Lex Luger, Rick Steiner, and Flair with Arn Anderson as a manager. <laughs> Is this the Millionaire's Club that he was pitching back then? Oh, I won't, you think that's what that turned into? Maybe, or maybe not. I don't know. I'm just get. I'm just thinking about Bischoff it. Bischoff nicks the idea, though. Um I uh, think the idea, since Luger and Nash have been trying to get Flair out of the picture, was for Nash to be in the Horseman as world champion and Flair being in the background in his own group. So, Nash so they were actually going to be Horsemen. Okay. They were going to be the four Horsemen, yeah. Uh, and wow. Flair was going to okay. be like, their manager. Like their... That's the craziest four Horsemen I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, Nash, Luger, Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner being in there is awesome. I think Rick Steiner is sick. and he would he be... fit in, He'd be kind of like Mongo was in the four Horsemen. It'd be awesome. Mongo was sweet. Rick Steiner, Rick Steiner doing the dog bark in the fucking Horseman's awesome. Uh, <laughs> speaking of WCW, there was an incident after Thunder where <laughs> I'm fucking befuddled here. An incident after Thunder where Disco Inferno was riding Hugh Morris and Arn Anderson got so mad he slapped Disco in the face. I didn't. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? I fucking put it down here and I'm fucking confused by That's it. That's gotta be true. <laughs> Where Disco Inferno was riding, like, I guess, like piggyback, and uh, Anderson got pissed and smacked Disco in the face. Like, is he riding? Like, uh,. I'm sure he wasn't shit. fucking like, him. I mean, no, he was probably no, just. No, 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 no. I mean, like, if you're riding somebody, like, like you're. You're giving them a hard time, kind of thing. Oh, that might be what I'm talking. That's crazy. <laughs> that was nowhere in my mind. I thought you know, he like, was. He I thought he tried me. You know what I mean? Yes. That, yeah. Dude, maybe. I'm maybe, so stupid. <laughs> unless they're riding their like horse around. <laughs> Dude, I thought. <laughs> I thought Hugh Morris was on all fours <laughs> with Disco Inferno riding him around the building, and Art Anderson smacked him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't oh, sound far fetched. That are, sounds like a disco thing. You are so smarter than me. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what they meant, but I like Dude, them being yes, on all fours like a horse. That's absolutely what <laughs> they meant. Piggyback style around thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you 
said riding him. That's the first thing I was like, uh. Dude, okay. I immediately said piggyback. I was being serious. <laughs> piggyback style. <laughs> Holy fuck. Riding. Oh my god. That makes so much more sense. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's sick. Wow. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Fuck. All right. Uh, <laughs> May 3rd. <laughs> I can't get the visual. I'll let that Pedro draw that. I can't get that visual out of my fucking head. Wow. Okay. May 3rd, 1999 Observer. This is crazy. Dr. Luther, who was a cult figure for <laughs> FMW many years back. Dr. The Luther? Luther! Will return to Atsushi Onita's 513 show in Corican Hall, which is headlined by Onita and uh, uh, Sambo Aso uh, Asoko. And uh, I fucked these names up, I'm sorry. A uh, bunch of fucking guys that I'm gonna fuck their names up and I don't wanna look like a jerk off. Uh, but Dr. Luther, back in fucking uh, <laughs> Onita's good graces here. Go. Which goes to show how fucking far back Luther has been rocking That's this insane. shit. This is what, 99? 99! Wow. That's 99, crazy. and then like fucking like 20 years later, he's wrestling on our show. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of fucked up. Was he on our May show? Uh, That'd be crazy if it was like, you know, like fucking... To the date. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Holy, that's crazy. Uh, uh, speaking of mainstream sports, they were just talking about other sports shit here. Uh, on 5-2, I put this in there for the Phillies. Uh, Philadelphia Phillies versus Los Angeles Dodger game in Philadelphia will be the a birthday party for the Philly Fanatic. Are you familiar with the Philly Fanatic? At their mascot? Yeah, the big fucker with the tongue. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. With the gimmick, yeah. Uh, who uh, supposedly is a big wrestling fan. I don't know how they got that info. Before the game, they are going to set up a wrestling ring and have the Rock and Roll Express versus the Head Shrinkers uh, with the Fanatic as referee, uh, which is awesome. But I put that in there because there's another note later on. Headbanger Thrasher is suing the Philadelphia Phillies <laughs> for $10 million <laughs> when a foul ball hit his wife in the eye, and she's now legally blind. <laughs> what the Holy fuck? Holy shit. You think it was the same game? It had to have been, that, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, although there is something on the back of the tickets and in, in baseball and hockey games with an, uh, about inherent risk, uh, there was a recent court case of a similar situation in a baseball game where the plaintiff was awarded seven figures. So, Philly Fanatic, big wrestling fan, and then they fucking annihilated headbanger Thrasher's wife in the face That's with a baseball. Up, That's crazy. I I'm can't fucking imagine. That. That's yeah, crazy. Good story, bad story. Even after a good business weekend last week, there are still a number of bounce checks during this week. Uh, in ECW, the morale is generally not good for that reason. So, uh, things are... Not looking too hot, but I mean, ECW survives for another year or two, right? Yeah. ECW's gone in 01. What's guilty as charged is. I think it's uh, like January, isn't it? January, yeah. So they're, they still got a little time left, but I mean, obviously, the. It's so weird. I feel like we talk about this a lot on here. We go back and talk about ECW stuff. We've been watching a lot of ECW um, when we do DPW trips, and it's like, you look at those crowds, and they are packed fucking houses. I mean, they're not like stadium stadiums, but like. There's at least 2,000 people in these fucking buildings, and it's like, how? And their merch was you fucking know the rocking. Gates gotta be, yeah, the gates got to be crazy for that. I mean, I yeah. know we do at DPW gates. I can only imagine 2,000 people for that. I'm sure they had the same type of I ticket I think prices. ECW might have been the first, one of the first companies to move to DVD as well, which is kind of crazy. So, like, they were ahead of the curve on a lot of shit, and then, like, it's just like... It's it's uh, you know uh, we say about what w, you know WCW wasn't meant to die and I I I feel the same about ECW just because I'm sentimental to it but like something had to go fucking wrong there with that to like die. Like, like after they got off of, off of um TNN like I guess they had nowhere else to go. I feel like Paul Heyman wasn't willing to like downsize and take cuts like he should sure. have done if he would have taken cuts and like production wise or whatever but he just wanted to do the same thing so yeah. I feel like that's why it never really because if they would have just been like okay we're just going to run like live events or whatever they could have done that you know and they could have kept going forever you know like how many times has TNA gone through so many financial woes and they somehow get out of it like ECW could have done the same if they really I think wanted so too. to I feel like Heyman was just blown up at the time and he's like I WWE is going to give me a job. I'm I'm just going to take time off. You know, I'm going to go book mentally. for WCW. <laughs> I'm going to book Cyclope. <laughs> Once WCW went out of business, I think they just were like, yeah, it's time. It's weird. Like, if ECW hadn't have died, I don't think... I, ROH probably would have just never started. Yeah. 
because right. you know that was like Gabe's thing, and I know RF and all was involved in that. But like that was you know that was from the ashes of ECW. So like yeah, you're right. I'm, wow. I I feel like they I, I don't know if Heyman himself said that or maybe Gabe said that, but I feel like there was like there's been hints that like they were going to lead in that direction anyway, where ECW was still going to be doing the extreme stuff, but they were going to like Ring of Honor was kind of the next evolution of it. And I imagine yeah, guys like cr- Brian probably would have been there and low key and shit like that, you know. Yeah, that would have been nuts. I think like Chris Harris and stuff were around at that time too. Maybe? I think they were, yeah, probably because they ended up in, in TNA. So I imagine like you know, Abyss a, maybe AJ was Styles. Around. I mean, yeah, I, I know Abyss was in the Indies at that time too, doing like something else. I WCW know dying, I think TNA would have happened regardless as, as long as WCW dies. Yeah, I you're think, right. You know, Jarrett and his Jarrett dad would have done both it, yeah. Jarretts. Yeah, I think so. But ECW, I, I, I or Ring of Honor at least, I, I think maybe. Might not have existed. Um, I mean, they could have scooped up so much talent from WCW. Oh, my God. He, there was so much free agent. Oh, ECW think. you're talking about? Yeah, ECW yeah. could have got so many guys. Like, a lot of guys that they're went They're going to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of guys that went to WCW from ECW that left and jumped yeah. probably could have oh, gone Oh, would have came right back. Sure, yeah. Yeah, Mikey. probably. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about Whitbrick. <laughs> uh, speaking of WCW, because nobody wants to do house shows anymore since the highest paid guys don't do them, WCW is planning on an incentive plan for the guys that are doing the house shows the plan isn't com- this is crazy to me i love this the plan isn't completed but it will be guys getting bonus a certain amount for every show they work probably 500 dollars and up depending upon their position on the card with the regular house shows falling off mondays and pay-per-views carry the load now there is real comparison with wwf which sells out most of its regular house shows because virtually the entire crew is on the card well wcw wcw house shows are filled with people like scotty riggs dave taylor silver king eric watts etc that don't get on nitro much let alone wins on nitro because the top stars do limited or no house shows so wcw is in such a bad way here that they are having to try to find a way to get top guys to work house shows because I guess they just didn't have to. No, because they uh, they had their TV deals or whatever. Was like it guaranteed National dates Hall. and it didn't? Yeah, they didn't have I to. I don't think it included house shows, but I think they went through with that incentive because I remember going to a WWE house show in like Canyon and uh, Terry Funk was on it and like a bunch of other Speaking people. Speaking of Jared, I think Jared ends up doing a bunch of them when he comes in. I think he's yeah, like. Jar- his deal was set on oh, like, to do I get, oh, okay. Maybe I after, get paid you extra know what? for house shows. Maybe after this, they started saying, hey, you guys got to do house shows if you're getting They must here. have incentivized it because, like I said, Terry Funk and all them were doing it, and I don't think they do it for, you know, nothing. Because Steiner, I think, does some too eventually. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had a pretty stacked uh, house show loop, guys, I think, after a while. Speaking of Scott Steiner, this is our last note here for The Observer. Scott Steiner was sued over an incident in 1997 at the All-Star Sports Bar and Grill in Marietta. Brian Hart, who, f- not, I don't think he was a Hart member, <laughs> he wasn't in the dungeon, <laughs> no. who filed the suit against Steiner and the restaurant, claimed he was attacked without provocation and pushed, shoved, and beat on. Uh, Steiner admits to hitting Hart once in self-defense, and his attorney claimed he was just there eating dinner and got up to protest someone else. His attorney uh, described the incident in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that a group of people were asked to leave the bar, and instead they were about to jump an assistant manager, and Steiner was one of a group of people involved uh, in the ruckus. Hart suffered a damaged mouth and a kick to the back in the brawl. Steiner was never arrested or charged with anything. The suit claimed Steiner was working the bar as a bouncer, which wasn't the case. So Scott Steiner is, even in 97, with this is not Big Papa Pump era, so this is, he's like doing tours of Japan at this point probably and shit like that. Yeah, he's in WCW, yeah. but he's beating ass in a bar. <laughs> he's beating up fucking mystery heart members in bars. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if you go to see, like, there's probably a group of people and Steiner stuck out like a sore thumb, you know what I mean? Like that mullet him? he had going on. Yeah, stuff maybe. Oh, the mullet. The That's true. That is very yeah, true. Yeah, he was, uh, you could definitely tell Scott Steiner at the time. But that is it for the Observer Notes uh, for this episode. And now, let's get into the Retro Review. Uh, all right, let's talk about WWF Monday Night Raw from April 26th, 1999. How old were you, Tony? Raw is what? The first, the first, the first war. Were you 42? 3,700 years old. 37? How old were you? Uh, 13? Oh, really? Okay, I was uh, 7. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I was just hitting my primal years as a teenager, you know. This this show You're definitely what? appealed to me. This, uh, this definitely appealed to me, you know. Your primal in, years coming into a man, you know. Holy you just, fuck! When you, you know, when you're preteen to teenager, maybe yeah, 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 yeah. You're rocking Whoa. boy boy girl parties and all that shit. Yeah, you know so what I'm talking were about. Nineteen ninety nine. Were you watching Raw like on your own, or like were the boys coming over, or like? No, I was I was at home, you know, because I had school and stuff, so I'd 
I would channel flip. Back Did you watch all Nitro. the way? Like, were you allowed to stay up to watch the end of the show? Yeah, I would. Uh, I, I don't think my I don't think my bedtime was that early. I would flip back and forth. Uh, my time, what was it? My time. Uh, ten well, o'clock. It'd get over at my time. Ten p.m. It would end at eleven p.m. for me, but yeah, so uh, it wasn't that I, bad. You know, I probably didn't go to sleep because I was you know, fired up from Raw, so I probably didn't go to sleep till like midnight, and then I had to be up at like six a.m. So really, some stuff just doesn't change. <laughs> yeah, I also had a TV in my room as a kid. So I did I too. I was, I was watching it on my TV in my room, so I think that's what's going. I on. I was big channel flip guy as well. Going and from I think when Raw Nitro. ended, I turned on Howard Stern until my parents run in, and then I turned it off. <gasps> Me fucking too. What <laughs> yeah, the fuck? Right? Yeah. My, Papa Blood was huge Howard Stern mark, so like I, it was cool for me yeah, to do. It. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Turn on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Show me your boobies. That's all I remember. From Howard what a what a weird my, fucker. <laughs> he's like uh, he right Super now. He's like a, he's like a really like. Uh, He's wholesome I, now, kind of. He's well, like not revered wholesome, as like a good journalist now. Like, yeah. if, if you want a good interview, listen to Howard Stern. Like, That's, it's actually good. How did we survive? But back in the day, he would throw baloney on women's butts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird bat. He's like 50 year old then, too. <laughs> now it's like he's like the best journalist ever. It's crazy. Great. It's so we crazy. start this raw off with a cold open, uh, the going over backlash from the night before. And JR says, three, damn it, three, as uh, Austin is pinning the rock and Shane stops the count because Shane is the special guest referee in the Austin Rock title match here. Mm, yes. um, this is the backlash after WrestleMania 15, I believe this was. Uh, so Austin won the belt at WrestleMania 15, uh, and he was getting a, he was defending the title here against The Rock, I believe. Yes. So, but they yes. had the smoking skull belt. I believe they stole that. So that's what he was trying to fight to get oh, back here. Damn. Okay. Uh, right. Vince uh, comes out to, after Shane tries to fuck Austin here. Vince comes out and hits Shane with Austin's belt. Austin hits the stunner and beats The Rock to retain the title. Uh, then we go to the back, and Stephanie is in the limo. And driver, driver, you got away from my dad. <laughs> driver, away from my dad. Where All to, timer. Stephanie? Ah! <laughs> uh, so that is the infamous where to Stephanie thing. From I, for some reason, I always remember that being Raw, but I guess it did happen to so, end the paper. I, I keep thinking Raw as well, but I guess yeah. they replayed Ended it on the Raw many times. That. Yeah. Uh, and Vince was out at the ring, so he didn't see that happen. So. Uh, so we go to live now, and Limo arrives with Vince McMahon uh, with a leather briefcase stepping out with the Stooges, uh, which I wrote, this is deadlock. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was always that briefcase. You got to carry that on that briefcase. What's in that briefcase? What's it, what is it? What well, is it? So, so, oh, I, you know what, Tony? I wanted to ask you if you would do this for me. I because you know the so they do the cold open here, uh, which is you know uh, thorn in your eye, and I was I would love if you just went over some of the lyrics here. Uh, for thorn the lovely in people. your eye, it's yes. my life in a box and ball of It's thorn in your uh, eye, right? Not thorn in a, your side. Oh, I don't know. Well, thorn in your side came up for some reason, or is it all thorn in your eye? Of because it goes what the hell? It started playing this Apple Music thing. I don't even know. Because it goes, duh, 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 oh, too duh, much. Duh, duh. Oh, yeah. All right. Re read the lyrics if you don't mind. Well, it's my life in a box in front of me, taking junk in my arms in the soul of me. You walk by, <laughs> eyes can't see me, lying face down. Come on, free your mind. Buy your alibi full time. I'm walking on stones and glass. When I reach out my hand, I know you can't stand me. For what I am, but once I had it all, all your holy things, angels without wings. <laughs> and then the next where one. Does, where does it say raw is war? Go, there's still more. Too much dark and not enough sky. Why am I your thorn? Why am I the thorn in your eye? I think Too that's much what dark. you think raw is war is. Thorn in your eye is the line you think is raw is war. Raw is war. Why am I a thorn in your eye? Too much dark and not enough sky. I have lost again, but I gotta maintain. <laughs> I lost again. That's what he says. I've I lost again. I don't remember that lyric. <laughs> That's what he says. I've lost again, but I gotta maintain. Too much dark and not enough sky. Raw is for is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you think it is. <laughs> yeah, but it's why am I a thorn in your eye? But I always thought it raw is for. <laughs> I think I did too. <laughs> I think that's why I know that that's what you were talking about. Raw is for. We're in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, there's a sign that says Doug the one the one pump chump mens. I don't know. So shouts out to Doug. Uh, and we start off here Not with... shots out. The one pump jump? Come on, dude. Figure What's, it out. I mean, listen, man. He, you know, maybe he's just got big schlong and all it needs is one <laughs> good one. <laughs> like That's what primal, his lady likes. Primal Tony. <laughs> That's what she likes. <laughs> and we start off with a you smell. Here comes The Rock. $500 shirt. Uh, we have Jim Ross and James E. Cornette on commentary. Uh, Lawler was away. I don't know. what Did they say why he was not here? 
He was just gone. I don't Elevated know. liver it, enzymes. But it was it was very nice. I think Cornette, not, I mean, he was all Cornette, right. I mean, commentator. as a commentator here, I think him and JR were actually pretty all right. Yeah, I don't think he's that bad, honestly, no. as a commentator. Uh, yeah. Rock comes out and he says, it's been a long time, but the electrifying one has come back to Hartford. This Last is, night, the This huh? is like a weird uh, in-between. In be- so they're, they, you yeah. can tell they are about to turn him. Yeah, uh, right. Rock talks about Stone Cold. Said the Rock did exactly what he said he was going to do. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> which Directly. was what his candy ass all over the arena. Stone Cold, the Rock is going to give have to give credit where credit is due. The Rock says, "You know what?" And then again, Stone Cold, the Rock says, "You are and will forever will be the biggest piece of trailer park trash walking <laughs> God's green earth." So he he couldn't give Austin the nudge, but he you know. Yeah, yeah, Gotta right. do what you can here. Uh, he said, when the Rock smoke was clear, the millions and millions of the Rock's fans were through chanting his name. And the fans actually start chanting his name. So I guess, they're you know, again, they're, they're, we're rocking here. Uh, yeah. The Rock still walked out of Backlash, the damn people's champ. But the Rock still has a problem. A 200-pound problem <laughs> of steaming, stinking monkey crap. <laughs> and his name is Shane McMahon. <laughs> steaming, stinking monkey crap. Steaming, st- once, it, when he drops steaming, stinking, anything that came after you are fucked. Billy he Gunn, are, get out of yeah, the fucking building. Yeah, if it wasn't <laughs> Shane McMahon or Stone Cold, they would never recover. But Absolutely the not. Rock, the Rock definitely paints a picture here, and it's St- very good. He said, before The Rock went one-on-one with Austin, The Rock told you, Shane, do not... Get involved in the Great Ones match, because The Rock was going to whoop Stone Cold's ass all by his lonesome. True to McMahon word, uh uh-uh. And then, the corporation music hits. Shane comes out, and here's the all the fucking stars are here. Shane, China, Triple H, Boss Man, The Posse, and Test. And Shane gets in the <laughs> ring, and Shane sounds exactly like The Rock. <laughs> of course, dude. <laughs> I never realized it until you brought up like a lot. Monkey a couple... crap, Rock. <laughs> yeah. Monkey crap. The fans start chanting asshole. Shane says, Rock, I handed you the WWF title last night on a silver platter, but no. The Rock has to let the corporation down. Rock, you stand in front of me as a loser, and it is you that is the mo- piece of monkey crap. <laughs> <laughs> Rock takes off the shades and puts them on his link chain, and of Rock course. says, "Monkey crap." <laughs> <laughs> and Shane, Shane, and Shane says that this Brahma horns take that sharp her her horns, turn them sideways, <laughs> and stick horns. them. He fucks it up. He said, "Yeah, he says Shane, take these Brahma horns, take these sharp her horns, <laughs> and turn them sideways, and stick them straight up. Your candy ass." Uh, Shane says, "I think the Brahma bull is full of BS, and you better take your attitude out of my." face if you smell what the boss is cooking and rock starts going off rock says jabroni you are three seconds away (laughs) and the rock means three seconds away from the rock laying the smack it down on your candy ass and triple h fucking grabs rock rock hits him china fucking gloms rock with an elbow rock thinks about it rock hits china she bumps holy corporation just starts stomping him out uh he's just He's getting More his specifically, ass Triple H, I think, right? Triple H does start stomping him out. Uh, Shane starts, tries to stop everyone else. Everyone else wants to jump in, but they kind of get stopped. Shane stomps him. But then Shane fucking kicks Rock in the midsection and then jumps on top of him. Shane says, Rock, your ass is fired. And they all leave. They all so get the Rock under. fired from the corporation. Here. Officially. Yeah. So this is uh, this beginning. He got fired. Wow. Beginning of the Rock turn. Rock gets on the mic and says, Shane, the Rock says, if you don't have enough. Sh- <laughs> what does this even mean? The Rock says, if you don't have enough sugar in that sack of testicles, then tonight <laughs> you will come down and face the great one one-on-one, and I'll make your monkey ass famous. <laughs> sugar sugar in the testicles, Tony? Is this a I scientific fact I'm that I'm not, not sure, sure of? I'm not sure what that means. Or was he talking about, is, can he not say come? It's just something that Do you rock have semen for The Rock? I don't know what sugar... I've never heard sugar in your testicles as an insult. So I don't know. Why am I... Sugar in your testicles. Da, 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 da. Too much dark. And Shane accepts. Shane says, you want me, Rock? You got it. Tonight. So tonight we will have The Rock take it on Shane McMahon. So this is a, bi- a big fucking intro after the pay-per-view. Yeah, and The Rock always had to get his... his Rock just got his ass beat, but he's got to get up and get on the mic again and bury everybody. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> you have no balls, monkey boy. <laughs> <laughs> so leading to this, I'm assuming this is going into, like, Rock Triple H stuff, right? 
Yes. Yeah, I think okay. that's right. Triple H is about to get boosted up. This uh, is where Rock... Triple H becomes like a main eventer after this, right? Because yeah. he's not even using my time yet. He's using corporate no. player here, which Fuck is... that song. <laughs> and if you don't know that, it's because you, cause you it's for the best. It's not a good song. Yeah, good. not a good song. So we go backstage. Vince and Joe Briscoe and Pat Patterson are backstage. And I, it doesn't. it's not like an office. It's just like a, a locker room. Uh, Patterson says, you know, Vince, I think we should call the cops. And Vince says, no, no, <laughs> don't <laughs> no. do that. <laughs> uh, we're going to do it his way. I brought everything he asked me to bring. The papers are signed. I just want Stephanie back. No cops. And Joe Briscoe says, how are you going to trust him? And Vince says, I don't know, uh, but I don't have an alternative. What if that son of a bitch in any way has harmed Stephanie? And Briscoe says, it'll be okay. So they are waiting for a, a call from one Undertaker well, on yes. his cell phone. <laughs> like, uh, don't they have like a landline there? Taker's on his cell phone. Is that what you're asking? Probably. I think so. Yeah, that's <laughs> Undertaker line. One eight hundred collect. Did you call me collect? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't paying for this shit, Vince. <laughs> uh, we have a backlash encore presentation advertisement. Did you ever buy any of those? I never got the encore, but I always remember them pushing the encore very hard. It I must wonder, have been big money maker for him. I was gonna say because they always did it, and it was always was it, it was always the Tuesday after. I feel like right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I never bought them because you know I definitely bought the one regular legally for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, weird to think that you could only watch it the encore. You could only watch it on one at a certain time. You couldn't just yeah. It wasn't it like an, it wasn't on demand. On demand yeah, wasn't really weird. a thing. So yeah. No. You, Back then, for those of you that are too young to know, pay-per-view was you watch it once, and then they did an encore presentation, and then after that, you have to wait for them to put out the VHS of the show, which took if you, a while. The real story, you have to call your cable provider. You literally have to dial on the phone, hey, I want to watch this, and then... That's right, there's no, like, button. Uh, it became the button eventually, Eventually, yes. But when, it like, was... TV. You, you call one eight, you call whatever your cable provider is, say, I want to watch WWF the, uh, Backlash, and then they'll pipe <laughs> we it into your why cable you watch, or watch Greed, WCW Greed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pipe that in, and then you watch it. That's so weird. What the that hell? is fucking weird. Or old. Uh, we go backstage. Vince and the Stooges are still back there. Vince, uh, is distraught. Very distraught. Like, what a nightmare. So they're still waiting... Uh, for the call here. Shane and the corporation are in another room, and they're hyping up Shane for his match with The Rock. Oh, yeah. Woo, daddy. Yeah, woo, yeah. Woo, woo. Yeah, bam, bam. Uh, Shane tells Rodney, go get one of Rock's jerseys, and Triple H calls him the croc, and then they all laugh. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> all right, cool. We go to the ring, and it is the brood of, I think it's Edge and Christian in the match, but it kind of falls apart there. Uh, Edge and Christian with Gangrel taking on X-Pac and Kane in a non-title tag match. Current tag champions are X-Pac and Kane. Uh, Raw is brought to you by Chef Boyardee Overstuffed Beef rally, uh, uh, Ravioli. Yes, all of that. <laughs> Castrol GTX Drive Hard and Western Union Money The staples transfer. of the Attitude Era, by the way. I wish I all of say, these things would sponsor a DPW. <laughs> I think Chef Boyardee, Castrol GTX, and Western Union are like the wrestling staples. That's like the trifecta of wrestling Castrol GTX, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And the... The Chef Boy RD commercials I remember mostly because of Mankind, but I think the Rock... Oh, we watched the Rock one, right? Mm -hmm. Getting Chevy with it or some shit. Getting Chevy with it. Yeah. Getting Chevy with it. And then there was like the Jericho one where he's eating them oh, on an island or something. Oh, the Jericho one. Yes. And Kane doing like 100 doing degree the... weather on the island eating it and Kane, Kane doing the thing. Kane does the... the taunt and Beef yeah. Ravioli flies over his fucking kitchen. Kane I having a West... regular house is fucking weird. I didn't even think of that until yeah, now. Fucked. I think Western Union jump ship to WCW at one point, but they were definitely into the wrestling. Uh, doesn't Castro GTX do that as well? I think so, yeah. Or maybe yeah. they were just, they all just shared it and there was no like. Yeah, maybe. Maybe yeah. they were paying so much money that it didn't fucking matter. Like WWF didn't want to lose them. Said, ah, whatever. As long as you're paying us the same or more than them. Yeah, you're right. So uh, Xbox, when Xbox comes out here, his like Tron and theme both get corrupted and then they just stop it and then start it over. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I thought it was like a DX thing. Where it was like, I thought it was an angle. It. Yeah, but then it comes. I think it's just overheated or whatever. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh my god, it overheated. <laughs> yeah, it's had to just, restart it. You think it was on like a just a tape because it wasn't like it probably, no, it, had, it could have been CDs at this point, but maybe like they were obviously connected because both the song and the video both get fucked up here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know because usually the Tron and the music are separate, uh, but I don't know. Kane comes out here. Uh, I this is like a wrestling thing that I. I guess I never really thought that I knew that I loved until like I listened to it here because I've heard it so much. Mm -hmm. But when commentators or ring announcers say that somebody is close to seven foot tall, 
instead of because they're not seven foot tall. I was like, that is like so sick. Like what a what a carny way to say something like, oh, this, he's almost ten feet tall. He's like eight yeah, foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to lie and tell me he's like seven foot four or something. Okay. They could have. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't know anyone that would lie about being seven foot four, no, but I understand exactly. what you're saying. No, I've never heard it. Uh, so we get into the match here. Kane, uh, they're rocking back and forth here. Kane hits the Kane clothesline on Edge, and then Gangrel gets into the ring and gets hit with a big boot by Kane. Then Kane throws Edge to the outside and starts whooping Gangrel's ass. The referee is looking at them, watching this. Uh, Gangrel's not in this match, right? No, he was. It was Edge and Gangrel were in the oh, match. Oh, Christian's on the outside? Christian was on the outside, but I could Christian see Because Christian gets in two and takes one. Yes, moves. yes. You are so, correct on okay. that. Okay, sure. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. But it, Fuck but it, I think, whatever. I think, whatever, no, yeah, dude. You're right. They, everybody gets involved in this match for yeah. sure. But I think it's Edge and Gangrel starting this okay. one off, which is a weird... Cause I that like is weird. Maybe they did that a lot back then in the brood days, but I don't remember. Well, I Chris- think Christian was still considered green at the time. Oh, he was like know. new to the group or whatever. No, well, I thought... Well, no, Edge, they joined... But I mean like as Edge far as like, a worker or what. Sure, right? okay, I don't sure. Know. Uh, yeah. So well, speaking of Christian, Christian gets fucking sent into the. He comes in the ring, gets fucked up too. X Pac hits the Bronco Buster on Edge. Edge gets choke slammed, and Kane pins him uh, for the win there. Uh, so they, I don't know why this was non-title. They are winning anyway. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, I don't know. Well, then the lights go out, and then the Brood Uh-oh. music plays, and the Brood is. <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. This visual. So the Brood's music was playing. The lights go out. The Brood is jumping Kane. The lights are doing like the flickering thing. But you can totally see them there. You can see yeah. them whooping Kane's ass. And X-Pac is just sitting on the apron watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote, he's a dumbass. All caps, X-Pac, help him, bitch. <laughs> Fucking hell. X-Pac is just standing there. Eventually, he tries to go back into the ring to get away from it. Edge goes for X-Pac while the lights are still out. X-Pac kicks him and then just gets in the ring. Lights come back on and... Kane has been bloodbath. The worst thing that can happen bath. to Kane. He's been brood bath. He, no, it's not <laughs> fucking brood bath, man. <laughs> I've been wrote down brood bath. No, Kane, right there. Kane is the worst thing that can happen to Kane. He is entirely red. <laughs> this is horrible. No, just one of his arms, and then the other side of the apron got all fucking <laughs> yeah, red too. They, How do you miss? You're all on top of him. I don't know. Uh, Kane, uh, X-Pac goes out to, of the ring at this point to check on Kane, but Kane turns around, fucking goozles X-Pac, and choke slams him over the barricade. <laughs> Dude, that was crazy. That should, I don't, that should be like an all-timer spot where he chokes him over the guardrail. That was crazy. Kane is a fucking idiot. Kane couldn't tell three people were whooping his ass and figure out what three people that might have been. Nah, that's is Xbox. I don't know. What Xbox was wrong has with six He's... arms now, and he beat my ass and bloody me. Used to beat up Xbox like every week. I feel so it was just that's normal true. But K- Kane, Kane didn't realize it was three people, and also didn't think, huh? The brood probably does this fucking blood you know, thing. Kane, ah, you know, Xbox. Xbox was carrying around his bucket of blood all in the his time, ass. You know? Yeah, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. So Kane choke slams Xbox over the barricade on the concrete. Kane fucking kills him. That's awesome. Uh, we go backstage. The Rock is in the locker room. He's just chilling, just hanging out. He's not in his gear. He's in the five hundred dollars shirt. He's just hanging out. Um, we go backstage again, and Vince and the Stooges in a different locker room than The Rock, still just waiting. And then the phone rings, but then it goes to commercial. Ooh, cliffhanger! Oh, who's on the phone? We come back, and supposedly all of this happened during the commercial because <laughs> it says moments ago, The it Undertaker called. Yeah, the tape machine's still rolling. The Undertaker <laughs> called. Vince McMahon. And Taker says, Vince, you know who this is. <laughs> oh, that was it. <laughs> who, who is it? Never heard his voice. Stephanie! <laughs> <laughs> is that you, Steph? <laughs> Vince says, I know who this is. How's Stephanie? And Taker says, she's fine, Vince. In fact, she's real fine. You know what I want. And Vince says, I brought everything you said. You, He said, you got controlling interest, signed, sealed. Now I want Stephanie back, and I want her back now. Vince was signing over the fucking company. That didn't, wow, I don't even know if they okay. mentioned this on commentary or what, but he was like signing over uh, controlling interest of the company to The Undertaker here. Sure. Taker says, oh, you planned ahead. I like that. Once I get those documents, Stephanie will be returned to you unharmed. But if you slip up just once... You will never see your precious little girl again. James wanted me to make sure that I noted to everybody. He said, please mention that the taker on the phone with Vince sounded like you were getting a side quest in Grand Theft Auto. 
<laughs> Which is it, it, the, the voice quality and all. It sounded exactly yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Vince, if you armor, I'll kill you. And Taker says that how you talk to your daughter's soulmate. Deliver those documents at 10 p.m. sharp by the loading dock at the Grand Eye Hotel. <laughs> what the fuck? There's, there's <laughs> a side quest. <laughs> yeah, this is the side quest <laughs> at the Grand Eye Hotel. Oh. And I don't want you to just deliver them. I want Steve Austin to bring them to me alone. And Vince says, I can't fucking ask Austin to do that. Dude hates me and he wants me to die. So I don't know what happened here. I don't know if Taker didn't hear him, like, say anything. But Taker says, that's your problem, Vince. Your problem. <laughs> Your problem, not mine. <laughs> so, he's like, that's your problem, Vince. But like, Vince doesn't say anything, so I don't think Taker thinks he heard him. You're, hey, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> your it's problem, not side mine. Stuff. They left in the extra voice acting lines and everything. Line. <laughs> and Vince says, hello, hello. <laughs> and Vince, he slams the phone and says, ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> The uh, GTA side quest, I can't get out of my fucking head now. That That's is. Come to the loading dock of the, the hotel. The loading dock <laughs> by the hotel, and it's at exactly 10 p.m. <laughs> Your problem. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Not my problem. Your problem. Uh, we go to the ring. Stone Cold's music hits. Michael Cole is in the ring. Uh, he intros Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin comes out in a fucking crazy ass shirt. I don't even know if I recognize this shirt. It's the Stone Cold Gym shirt, which is a skull holding a barbell in his mouth. <laughs> this shirt <laughs> That's is awesome. awesome. Yeah, this is fucking awesome. He's coming out with the fucking jeans super high as he usually does. Of course, yeah. Uh, barbell in the mouth shirt is awesome. Uh, Austin tells Cole, get, out, get your ass out of the ring. Uh, Austin says, you damn right I overcame all the odds and did exactly what I said I was going to do. As far as The Rock saying he beat my ass, Jesus Christ, son. All you got to <laughs> do is watch that match and see that Stone Cold Steve Austin on his own beat your sorry ass. And that's all I got to say about that. Vince comes out and he walks the ring. No music here. Uh, and Vince says... I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I guess I did. <laughs> I'm surprised Austin didn't beat his ass right yeah, there. Yeah, right? <laughs> Game a stunner. Man says, this is not easy for me, but to make a long story short, I need your help. And uh, The Undertaker has my daughter, Stephanie, and I need your help. And Austin says, what are you trying to say because you ain't making any sense? <laughs> he very clearly said what he needed to say there, but Vince says, this ain't anything personal. I know you don't like me, and I know you never will. And the feeling is somewhat mutual. And Austin, while he's saying this, Austin's nodding and smiling. Yeah, yeah. And Vince says, this is about my daughter, Stephanie. He always he always refers to her as that. My daughter, Stephanie. That's always what she is. And Steve, you can help me. And Austin says, with all due respect to you and your little daughter, hell, son, I got a million problems on my own, so I don't give a rat's ass about your problems. <laughs> and Vince says, the Undertaker has made some demands. Austin's already said fuck off, and now Vince is going to tell him more. <laughs> He's asked for some documentation. I don't care about that, but he demanded that instead of me delivering the documentation to him, he's demanded that you do it. And if you do that, I really believe everything will be fine with my daughter, Stephanie. Again, okay, there it is. <laughs> my daughter, Stephanie. And I think you can understand my point of view as a father. Austin has had enough. <laughs> Austin, <laughs> what you're saying is, what you're saying is, is that Vince McMahon needs Stone Cold Steve Austin. Is that what you're saying? That's what you're saying. So if that's true, if that <laughs> is true, saying, saying if Vince that's what you're saying, if, that, if that is true, that's what you're saying. If then that's what I want you to say to me, say Vince McMahon needs Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Vince says, I, I need Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Austin says, well, that sounds all real good, Vince, <laughs> but you must think I have a real horrible memory. For the last 15 months, every single month, you made my life a living hell, and I will give you credit. You have done one hell of a job. Uh, Stone Cold never forgets one single thing in the WWF, so since Vince McMahon needs Stone Cold, I'll say this. By the same token, Stone Cold Steve Austin needs Vince McMahon. To kiss his ass. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. And Vince is obviously very unhappy about this. <laughs> what do you think? It was Stone Cold Steve Austin. JR says, I, don't, I, don't, I, well, I think the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Austin is just so fucking money here. But honestly, it's so weird. Like the crowd pops for it. But you can tell they kind of feel bad for Vince. Which yeah. probably is the first time that's happened in like probably forever. 
Yeah, well, the Stephanie thing kind of got him sympathy the whole... Right. Yeah, all sure, of that. Sure, because, yeah. you know, uh, got to, you know, look out for my my daughter. My daughter, uh, Stephanie. So we go WWF, re- uh, WWF Rewind, brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. Uh, Backlash, uh, this is an all-timer spot here. Um, it's also in... Is it WWE 13? Yeah, that's a Stone Cold one. Backlash, The Rock stealing the camera... Uh, while he's on the announcer's table, he films Austin, he calls him a piece of trash, and then Austin hits him with the stunner while The Rock is holding the fucking camera. That is... All-timer. That is unbelievably fucking all-timer, man. That's, like, so sick. I yeah. love that shit. Um, that's awesome. Uh, we got a SmackDown advertisement here. Do you know if this was hyping up the first SmackDown or no? Yeah, the WF primetime special SmackDown. Oh, yeah. was it... So, but was it the debut? Uh, what would this be? 99? Because I know they do a pilot, and then they do an official one. The pilot was April 29th, so maybe it was it. Yeah, pilot episode of SmackDown uh, happens the same week. That's pretty fucking cool. We go backstage, and the Vince is with the Stooges, and Briscoe says, what are you going to do? And Vince says, I, I got to do this. I asked for Austin. Austin's not coming. Pat says, be careful, and Vince just leaves. And we go to the ring. Val Venus taking on D'Lo Brown with Ivory. A lot of stuff has been going on with Val Venus as of late. <laughs> a uh, lot of he- good stuff. I'll on Heat that. last night, Nicole Bass choke slammed Ivory and then told Val uh, that she wants him to slide his trombone into her brass section. Was that how you were flirting when you were 13 year old, Tony? No, I was flirting like Nicole Bass. You got a problem? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Val says, hello, ladies. But Dilo's music hits. Fucking cuts him off. You better he, recognize. He get, but you better recognize. He gets to the ring. He just fucking, they just start going. Uh, they have a fun little match here. Val slams Dilo. Uh, he does the hip swivel. over. Did Val just do the hip swivel or did the hip swivel into a move? Because I don't remember. I feel like it was always he gets fucked up when he does the hip swivel. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he does the hip swivel over Dilo and Nicole Bass. Comes down to the ring. D'Lo gloms Val from behind, but Val hits him with a back elbow and bumps him. Val gets distracted by Nicole Bass once again. Uh, then he turns around into the sky high by D'Lo for the wins. D'Lo gets a victory here. Nicole Bass gets in the ring. Uh, Ivor gets in and jumps on Nicole Bass's back because, of course, Nicole Bass fucked her up Shades on Shades of that Observer stuff earlier. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Around, like, just riding around. <laughs> you more <laughs> Disco Inferno style. Yeah. Shades of that. Nicole Bass slams Ivor down fucking over her head. Uh, Val gets to his feet. He's unhappy. He does not want to stick his trombone in her brass section, and he just fucking leaves. So. Yeah, Nicole Bass says, you know what I want? You know what I want? You know and what then, I want? Uh, on commentary, they said Nicole Bass had an entanglement with Val Venus. Is that true? Is that what does that mean? That's like uh that's the Will Smith thing. You know, she had an entanglement. Will Smith's wife Did they had an fuck? entanglement. No, it's an entanglement. You don't you you I don't I'm know. A, I'm a you can decide for loser. yourself, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not that's a nice way to say that you want to have sex. Ah, or you did have sex. Entangled yes, has an entanglement. Penis. Yes. Penis. Vagina. Uh, so we go backstage once again, and Stone Cold's walking backstage. He walks by the Big Show, and he, <laughs> he, he walks by Big Show. He stops. He turns his head, and he says, what the hell are you looking at? <laughs> Dude, so, okay, so Stone Cold's walking backstage, and I swear to God, Stone Cold was eating an apple. Was but he? he? Was, Dude, he, he okay, was, I thought was, so, no, too. No, no, I no, thought he was, he was eating something. Eating, I, no, he was not eating an apple. Okay. I know what he's doing. But the was first time I saw it. I thought he was eating an apple. I was like, why the fuck is Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> eating an apple walking backstage? But he was spitting chew into a cup. Oh, is what he it was, was a doing. red solo cup, I think. Yeah, it was like a okay. coffee cup or, you know, like a little that, cup like I that. Thought, I didn't think it was an apple, but I thought he was, I did think he was eating something I when said, he walked by. I said, why is Stone Cold eating an apple? That's I thought so he was going to make character. a fat joke to Big Show. <laughs> why the hell is jump? he eating? <laughs> so, yeah, he said, what the hell are you looking at? And Big Show says, oh, man, come on, man. It's the guy's daughter. And Austin says, I don't give a rat's ass who it is. <laughs> and he walks by eating his apple. <laughs> so we go backstage again. Uh, we're at the Raw interview area, which is the Raw with a fucking barrel and chain link fence. That's uh, awesome. Michael Cole interviewing Billy Gunn with Road Dog. Uh, Billy Gunn says, uh, Triple H thinks he's too good for D. Was he trying to mock Triple H's promo style here? Was that what he was doing? Because he talks uh-huh. weird. But I don't know. If that's what he was yeah, going maybe, for. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. He says, uh, Triple H thinks he's too good for DX, and it's up to us to remind him where he came from. Mr. Ass doesn't fail, so it's up to me to get the job done correctly. 
This is like hard push for Mr. Ass era, by the way. I don't think JR calls him Billy Gunn once on commentary. He just No, he was Mr. Mr. Ass for sure. And dude, he looked great here. Like he, he looked good. Is like jacked, man. He is looking crazy. And, and he his is work probably, rate is crazy at this time too. Like yeah. he was, uh, he's, he's a couple months away from getting buried by the rock. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, Rock is earning you, face here. Did you catch uh Road Dog shirt here? No. Uh, I would have to tell you. He also has it when he comes out later. But Road Dog is wearing a a WWF Hotel and Casino Las Vegas t-shirt. Whoa. Did you know this existed? I have you know what? You know what's weird? I feel like that's not the first time we've talked about that shirt. Maybe Al Snow, or maybe it was just Road Dog before. Did you talk about it already? But he did it there. Did you know about the hotel and casino that they had there? I God, I'll be honest, Tony. I feel like we talked about it, but I, I mean, it could have been a million episodes ago. Can you tell me more? I don't remember talking about it. It might have been you and a James thing, but maybe. anyway. I see the shirt uh, here. Yeah, is it so the one want, that says "Cause life is one big crap shoot" on the back? It might. That's a good. <laughs> point. That's awesome. I didn't see the back of it, but yeah. Uh, so anyway, they were gonna buy a casino, uh, the Debbie Reynolds Hotel and Casino in Vegas, Whoa. and they paid over ten million dollars for the what? property. Uh, but and Debbie Reynolds was pissed because that was like her stuff, and you yeah, know, she couldn't. She wouldn't be able to sing at a WWF hotel and casino anymore. So that's where that was. That shirt's crazy. I see the back of it. Yeah, yeah WWF hotel, it. Cas uh, hotel and casino, Las Vegas on the front and on the back because life is one big crap shoot. Dude, with yeah, Blue dude. Wire, we could fucking <laughs> we could rebuild WWF Casino. <laughs> so if you look online, it, I don't know if you can go on YouTube right now, but while I'm doing this, but there's a okay. uh, ver there's a video that shows like Is a there? virtual of what hotel the hotel was gonna casino. look like. What? Um, but. So basically, is it they the went to, WWF Hotel and Casino 1999 video? Yeah, Concept that one. It has like okay. a, yeah, it's like a digital video of the. All right, listeners, I, I will give you a play by play of what I see here. You can find this on YouTube. Just search WWF Hotel and Casino. It's WWF Hotel and Casino 1999 in brackets. Concept art video showcasing the proposed WWF Hotel and Casino uh, in Las Vegas. WWE sold the property in 1999. So they very quickly gave up on this. So it's a gigantic. This is also to a Red Hot Chili Peppers song. Gigantic W. This isn't even Scratch logo WWF logo. This is a uh, new gen with. Uh, yeah, they must have had the idea for a while. It looks I like think. the Raw intro playing inside of it. And then you go inside. Typical kind of casino look here. There's screens around that are just playing like, like WrestleMania. Yeah. What the fuck? Ticket sales. You can buy WWF tickets there. There's an Armageddon area. <laughs> what the? F There's an Armageddon area, and I don't know if you can see this, Tony. This is about two minutes into the video. In the back of it. There's just a big banner, a big sign that says meat. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a meat shoot in that area? It's, it's for meat. For Holy Sean Stacey, fuck. Like meat? Yeah. Wow. So this, you said, do this doesn't end up happening. So basically what happened was the, the location wasn't located on the Vegas Strip. That's where all the action oh. was. It was off on its own and in the business location. Location, location, location was everything. Vince's <laughs> wife, Linda, said that while they were excited about the new project initially, the cost and the burdens of running a hotel just wasn't there for them. She said, do you know and understand and do it passionately? The casino business must be in your blood. Uh, they didn't want to dump millions of dollars into a money sure. pit that was off the Strip. Um, wow. The site has since been demolished into a parking lot. Supposedly, it wasn't anywhere near the strip, like yeah. not at all. I found it that fascinating. Super that there's always fascinating. something new that I learn about, like WWF and stuff. Like I had no idea. Like the only reason I knew because of the shirt. I was like, hotel and casino. What That's is awesome. That? Thank you for yeah. I'm, I love that. Thanks for bringing that up. I thought that was crazy that they tried to do a hotel. That would have been like the wildest. I would have stayed there. I mean. They say I, location, all the marks would hell yeah. Why they not? Say I'm gonna location, go get location, a fucking, location, but yeah, uh, they could. I mean, maybe after the WCW went out of business, they kind of died. So it would have been like a they would have lost so much money after. You I would fucking sat at the uh, you know the the coin the machines meat, all the day meat with table or whatever meat table and Rikishi's ass on the fucking coin machines or whatever like that. Yeah, probably they probably were serving DDP hamburgers. <laughs> if they would have had a ring in there and did like matches and stuff, that would have been crazy. Oh, they I'm sure they could have did something like that, right? Or yeah, something most of like those hotels have like a show or something going on. So that is so sick. Wow, oh, man, I kind of hate that this didn't happen because it would have been a disgusting failure, and I, that would have been pretty <laughs> fucking failed. crazy. Because yeah. like once night uh, WCW and ECW closed, this would have bombed so hard. Like nobody would have cared. God, it would have. Yeah, no way. They would say like this wrestling sucks. <laughs> uh, imagine if they did it and then they changed it to WWE. Holy fuck. Yeah, that would have been fucked. So yeah, there's a little venture That's they took awesome. into the casino and hotel. I figured I'd. 
bring that, that up. That's thank you very crazy. much. Uh, that's awesome. I do like that. Hey, speaking of merch and shit like that, this is something that I'm surprised that they didn't do more of. Maybe even today, because I know the Home Shopping Network and that shit is still like super popular. Exclusive WWF merch on the Home Shopping Network tonight after Raw. So they were going to go on there. I think Michael P.S. Doc Hendricks Hayes was going to go on there and fucking sell some merch. Okay. There was a, there's a really good, I think if I'm recalling it, there's a really good one with Kevin Nash on there. Is there something? Oh, in WCW? I, maybe DDP too? Yeah, I think, I feel like there was a Kevin Nash Home Shopping Network, but Dude, I could be I wrong. Can't, the amount of fucking things that the past five minutes have just opened in my brain is fucking brutal. I, I searched Kevin Nash Home Shopping Network, and there's a WWF on Home Shopping Network from 98 that looks like DX uh, is a part of. You can get a Stone Cold Dude. Rattlesnake or Half Skull shirt for $16. <laughs> wow. Maybe it wasn't it, but there, oh yeah, there's one. Uh, look up WCW Home Shopping Network, or it's a QVC special. With Kevin oh, Nash. Oh, okay. Up. I remember this one. This one, did you, you know, Kevin Nash is like a shithead. So it was really this is good. a two-hour video. <laughs> yeah, this I'm gonna is, put this on after the fucking we're it's done. It's the this. whole like uh, experience. Wow. Of, Kevin Nash is just like a shithead selling merch. So you know how it is, dude. Oh my god. I all right. I'm gonna watch that and I'll let you know if there's anything good from it because I is imagine what our next Nash is like high. Is, is QVC style. <laughs> SGH QVC style. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> I think and they we, had the WCW credit card around that time too. And so probably WCW Cologne. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this shit's crazy. Dude, Just the idea Nash of, is like, probably high as fuck on this. I gotta watch this for yeah, sure. So many somas, man. Let me tell you. You know what's fucked up, man? If like if a company did that now with like exclusives and it was like figure shit. I would probably be suffering. <laughs> Do you know they they, they still kind of have that thing? They have Amazon really? Live or something. There's like a live Not with Amazon wrestling, right? With with influencers are like on what? Amazon, like selling products. Amazon Live. It's Amazon.com slash live, and it's literally like influencers like with their daily. Wait, deals it's live right now. Yeah, yeah. So like these influencers what? will be on here like trying to. There's show, nine so people watching this girl. What's she selling? Yeah, those, it's like a live stream on she's Amazon. She's selling a GD gaming chair from my office. Yes, and then you go on here and she like tries to get you to sell it, and then it, I think she gets like proceeds. Look at she, all these streams underneath it, bro. I want to buy these Crocs unisex child classic clogs from There's the Clara Jesse. shopping show on here. Look at the Clara shopping. Fuck show the on here. WWF. I'm gonna fucking buy stuff from uh from fucking Jesse here. I wonder how you sign up to do this. Like I could just do. What it if we you... did this? <laughs> It's kind of wild. This is like the home shopping. I'm gonna sell yeah, dog shit on here. I guess you have exists. to sell Amazon products, right? Yeah. So it's like, Jesse you know, just went offline. Get back here! I fucking the need the Crocs. Uh, so sorry, way off topic. There we're going sidebar to go again. We'll super sidebar. sidebar. Another we are sidebar going. <laughs> this is a nostalgia trip with Johnny and fucking Tony here. Uh, so we go to the ring. Triple H with China, uh, taking on Mr. Ass Billy Gunn. Uh, his nameplate says Billy Gunn, but they only refer to him as Mr. Ass. So uh, I was mentioning this earlier. This is a transition song um, for Triple H. It's called Corporate Player. Um, I got a lot of like Deb like couldn't have rolled her eyes more at me knowing that that's what that was called. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah, of course we did. Uh, he started using Corporate Player April twenty fifth, ninety nine. So he debuted it the night before Backlash. This song. So he starts using the song the night before this Raw. Um, he uses it until May. So he only uses it for a month. And that's when they switched to the instrumental version of My Time, which was called Cerebral Assassin. I think they changed that a couple times before they finally get to My Time, which I yeah. think most people know from that time. But yeah. I did okay. corporate player, uh, for some reason, sticks in my head. I don't think it was in any games, though. Billy Gunn is awesome. Uh, Triple H is Mr. working S. over his knee. Triple H is uh, slow. He's he's not hurt very much yet, so he's still working, but he's still doing limb work here. He goes for a figure four. Already signs of him becoming Ric Flair. Um, he's using the rope for leverage. Earl Hebner blatantly ignoring it for a minute before he turns around and counts to five. Hey, he uh, does the figure four pin here. That was cool. Does he? Oh, that's the right. Cody he Rhodes. does. You're right. The Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Fucking I love hell. It. Who? Did, oh, <laughs> Flair just won with that, didn't he? On the, yeah, the yeah, gimmick. He did. Fucking yeah. hell, man. Uh, we go to the outside. China throws Mr. S into the ring post on the outside. Fucking great collision. Uh, Road Dog comes out. JR is very excited about this. He's a Road Doggy Dog! He's <laughs> <laughs> fired up. Uh, China steps in Road Dog's way, who is trying to get down the ringside to help Billy Gunn. Uh, but in the ring, Triple H has hit Mr. S with the pedigree and gotten the win. Uh, son of a bitch. Road Dog uh, not wanting to, to attack China yet. I guess he still is not over the turn. 
So Shane and the corporation are backstage. They're hyping up Test and Bossman, who are getting ready for their match with Big Show and Mankind. Uh, Test leaves, and then before Bossman gets to leave, he grabs him, and he whispers something into his ear. Uh-oh. Not looking good for Test. Uh-oh. Uh, for those that listen to Deadlock quite often, yes, Test, it's going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> no! Leave him alone, man. Uh, we have a Chef Boy RD commercial here. Uh, a hunter has killed mankind and mounted his head on the wall by Beef Ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> This is fucked up. He's not even dead yet. He's still talking. <laughs> he's still talking. He's mounted to the wall and he's beefy. He I'm a nice it. day, beefy. Uh, backstage, X Pac is angrily looking around for Kane. He's fired up, kicking trash cans. Hey. He's, kick, he's kicking. He's kicking. Hey, he's kicking he shit all. I says, need that. Yeah. He says, "Kane, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> He does say that. <laughs> he is pissed. <laughs> we go to the ring. It's Mankind and Big Show taking on Test and the Big Boss Man. I thought Mankind had died during the commercial and got mounted to a wall, but I guess that was non-canon. No, also, uh, shout out to our Patreon where you can watch the Mankind Big Show Boiler Room Brawl. Yes, watch I was going to say that. I forget what number that was, but uh, we did do a Patreon watch this episode on the match that they recap here from Backlash. It's Mankind versus Big Show Boiler Room Brawl. It is way bloodier than any it's, of us expected. It's gnarly and there's glass. It's great. You man. should definitely fucking watch it. Uh, and watch it with us because why not? Uh, last night on Heat, Test accidentally cost Bossman a match against Kane. And then Bossman on purpose hit Test in the back of the head with a nightstick and made him lose the Viscera. Viscera oh. also beats Test with a pile driver? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't remember that being his finish in any of the games. No, so. it's a splash, right? That's all you They did. were just trying to injure Test and get him out of the company. Yeah, get out yeah, of our company! Get out of here! <laughs> Uh, so in this matchup here, Bossman doesn't seem too concerned about tagging and test. Eventually, he tags himself in after he gloms Mankind from behind. Uh, Big Show gets tagged in. Bossman gets his ass whooped here, just pillow to post. Uh, Bossman makes a tag to test. Big Show brings him in the hard way. Big Show then goes to choke slam test, but then Bossman gets in and low blows Big Show, and the referee could not give a fuck. Why? I don't know. Ref's discretion at the time. Super ref's discretion. Big Show then hits a gigantic diving double clothesline on Test uh, and <laughs> Boss Man. Like, not from the top, but it's like he hits the ropes and, like, yeah, soars. Yeah. He's like a yeah. fucking airplane. Fucking, this is crazy how this looks. He's gigantic, and he's still in rock and shape here, so he's still flying Dude, all over the place. Dude, he looks yoked out of his mind here. When he walks down, he's just fucking jacked. Holy it's, shit. It's actually, I mean, I. it's a shame, man, because... I feel like if Big Show came in and everyone was cool and he didn't have WCW stink on him, you could easily bring him in the same way that he was brought into WCW and just give him the strap right the fuck away. Yeah, I mean, like, you're right. Austin is so fucking over. So, like, giving Austin the belt at Mania makes a lot of sense. But fucking, you know, Big Show comes in. Uh, I, Big Show comes in before Mania. So, I guess, you know, he wouldn't have had too long of a run. But, like, he could have fucking killed Austin and had it for a few months, and then Austin gets it up on him. Like, Big Show is awesome here. He's fucking working, but everyone hated WCW, and then they stick him with Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, he got to learn the ropes. He's got to go under the. He's got to go under the learning he's tree. Go no, into the not desert. the learning tree. <laughs> go to the desert. Not the learning tree. No. Yeah, he had to go to the learning tree. Shit. Uh, boss man throws Test into a choke slam because he says fuck off. Uh, Big Show throws Test to the side because Big Show says fuck off. I'm not going to hit him with that. I want to hit you with that. Uh, he chases after Boss Man. Meanwhile, Mankind DDTs Test. Uh, Big Show chases Boss Man around the ring while Mankind puts Mr. Sacco on uh, Test, which was not just Mr. Sacco, but it was Mankind face on Mr. Sacco, Mr. Sacco, which I thought yes. was weird. And uh, James E. Cornette commits to this one. He's like, ah, that sock is bloody from last night. Oh. And then, but it's not. It's not. It was a fresh one. He didn't have the, the face on it, it did he? It was the face, yeah. but he thought it was blood because oh, he, you know, it looked kind yeah. of bloody. Okay. And then they show the face. He's like, yeah, that stinking bloody sock he had on <laughs> Last night, he just commits to the bit because he knew he well, messed nice. up. But yeah, it was yeah. definitely weird. So uh, Mankind hits him with the, uh, puts him in the Mr. Sacco and gets the win. Boss Man gets in the ring with a nightstick and argues a test after the match. Uh, test and Boss Man get face to face. They're arguing. Test goes to walk away, but Boss Man grabs him. He says, you fucking get back here. Test turns around and fucking decks Boss Man. Which, of course, means that Boss Man has to get up and fucking hit Test in the back of the head with a nightstick. God damn it! Leave <laughs> Test alone! Leave Test alone! Why? You can't catch a break, man. Test is screwed. This since is day one. 
You can pro you might be able to pinpoint this as the beginning of the end for Hey, he gets here. immunity from the alliance, okay? So there's that. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> he can never be fired. They fire him anyway. Even though he does. Yeah. We go backstage and Vince is in the parking lot by the loading bay at the, the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Austin sees that Vince is standing there on the TV and just walks by eating an apple. <laughs> Except the TV cuts to a picture of Austin because it's live. Austin, and then, Austin has a special feed of it backstage where it's not him, it's Vince. So. And then it cuts to like, oh, then the cameraman hides so he doesn't show the TV. It's pretty good. Uh, we go to, a, I, I was confused at first. This is a stone cold hype video, but it turns out it's just an advertisement for his t-shirt. Yes, the only game is his game. The only rules are his rules. It's the Stone Cold shirt with the snake hands. I love it. That shirt is fucking crazy. I don't. It's I don't think I ever now while one. the venom is hot. Twenty five dollars plus six dollars shipping and handling for that shirt, and they they blurred out the number, but they kept the PO box information. I wonder so, if you could did, still send in for it. You That'd think if we send something to them and say, "Hey, can you send something back?" That they would send. What something? if I sent in, like, wrote a check because they say you can send in checks. If for I sent a check. And I wrote like the line on it, the Stone Cold Venom <laughs> shirt or whatever. Can you send it? <laughs> oh my God! You want to try it? We should try. We it. should do like a All little right. thing. Yeah, where you send in the. I'm gonna write a twenty five dollar. What is it? Plus shipping and handling. I don't plus, know. Twenty five plus six dollars shipping and handling. Yes. All right, I'll send him a. But what was twenty five dollars then? That it is now. It would be more, right? Now. Yeah, I don't know. What do they sell shirts on WWE? Twenty five right dollars supposedly is forty four dollars now, Tony. Well, the Tribal Chief Acknowledge Your Daddy shirt that they just released is twenty seven ninety nine. So yeah, I'm but Stone it. Cold in ninety nine is different than Roman Reigns twenty twenty two. So that's all. No, acknowledge your daddy, bro. So forty four dollars and six dollars in nineteen ninety nine was like ten dollars. So you have to send fifty, like about fifty five dollars here, Tony, for this shirt. Okay. All right, we'll try it out. I'll send right. a check. Fifty five dollars. PO box. So we go backstage. X Pac is still rampaging through the backstage. He's looking for Kane. He still can't find him. Kane. He's looking for Kane. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All the while, hardcore Bob Holly is stomping out Al Snow at the interview area. <laughs> He's just whooping his ass, beating oh, him with is, a pipe. This guy likes to be hard. He calls himself hardcore. He, yeah, I think this is just a transition. Oh, he calls himself hardcore. So hardcore Bob Holly's beating Al Snow with a pipe. He throws him into the barrels in the interview set, and then he grabs head. And he grabs head and he puts it in Al Snow's face and he says, you'll get this back when you get my hardcore title shot. So I guess we're building up to the hardcore title match with Al Snow and Bob Holly for the sure. 15th time. Yeah, I can't remember which one it is. They've had a million of them. If things didn't get fucking weird as it is here, we go to a video package here or a promo, you could say. And it is a black and white shot uh, outside of a home. You think, yes. does this look like your home? Uh, growing up, Tony? Nice <laughs> white picket fence. <laughs> didn't have the white picket fence. No, I had no not. fence. I barely had doors. <laughs> no doors on my house. Wow, okay. uh, and it, I believe, if I'm not wrong, the mailbox said cleavage. Is that right? Yes, cleavage was the last name of right. this character. So we go into this home, and it is uh, what you all might recognize as Headbanger Mosh. Uh, sitting at a table, or Chaz, some of you may know him as. Uh, but here, he is Beaver Cleavage. And Beaver Cleavage is there, well, he's got a little hat on, he is a grown man, he's, but they're playing him as a child here. He's eating cereal, and he spits the cereal out. And he says, this cereal sucks! I can't eat this, it's dry! Mom! Yes. And then, a woman comes in, uh, very large Hammer Homers. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. beautiful lady. She comes in, and please, I, I need you to tell me that I'm wrong, because I swear I fucking heard this wrong. Does she say, does mother's little hairy beaver want some of mother's milk? She does say that. Okay. That's fucking horrible, man. <laughs> <laughs> does mom's Pussy want some ditties? <laughs> you couldn't even do step bro or step sis? No man, that wasn't in yet. This is full fuck your mother. Fuck You're your right. mother. Dude, what the fuck? Does it when does like how long I need to know more about Beaver not Cleavage? Very long. We have not, not very talked long. about Beaver Cleavage on this show at all. It is uh not very long. It uh, uh it was does a Vince Russo it was a Vince Russo Ed Ferrar idea. Here course. we go. After Thrasher suffered a knee injury in May ninety nine. Uh, 
War- Warrington, who is uh, Mosh or Chaz, was renamed Beaver Cleavage, a reference to the TV sh- series Leave It to Beaver. He appeared mm-hmm. in black and white vignettes with his quote unquote mother, the voluptuous Mrs. Cleavage. Wait, who was Mrs. Cleavage? This is like a, she's like a worker. <laughs> okay. Uh, she also was known as Marianne, uh, Mariana was her name. She was Canadian. Uh, okay. So uh, she is Mrs. Cleavage, and the two would exchange sexual innuendos. Uh, for example, Mrs. Cleavage would offer Beaver some of Mother's milk when he complained that his cereal was dry. That is the exact one we just had here. The gimmick was quickly scrapped via a work shoot promo in which Chaz supposedly gave up on the character and retailered. Okay. Right. So on June 28th, now calling himself Chaz, ridiculed the Beaver Cleavage gimmick and identified Mrs. Cleavage as his girlfriend, Mariana, uh, in a shoot-style interview. Uh, and oh, then they feuded with meat. <laughs> and then he leaves Mariana <laughs> on SmackDown and she begged him to take her back take her back throughout the night. And then the woman came out, they did a black eye angle, and then oh, he got beat up by a bunch of wrestlers while denying that he did anything wrong. She tried to have the police arrest him, but then he was saved by Thrasher, who showed the film that demonstrated that she was lying. And then she was arrested, <sighs> and then the headbangers were reformed. <laughs> what, what the, the fuck? fuck is you it? go from cleavage to meat? What the hell? <laughs> and a uh, fucking hell, man. Okay. This is so fucked up, man. Uh, this was a total Vince Russo guy. Uh, oh, 100%. Russo idea. I think he was a big uh, Leave It to Beaver fan, obviously, which fucking. totally connected with these kids, and I had no idea I what the fuck. I totally to remember was. the fuck fucking angle with him being like accused of shit too i remember that because that was like 99 smackdowns i remember yeah. that vividly it's so weird yeah. so we go to uh backstage again uh the rock is getting ready for his match with shane he's uh, a little more dressed up here but he's not in like full gear it looked like he's set up for a street fight yeah and then he hawks a big ass loogie <laughs> <laughs> yeah what the fuck <laughs> uh we have jeff jarrett with deborah taking on the godfather uh which this is originally a non-title matchup godfather is current intercontinental champion the hose come out with the IC title, which is awesome. <laughs> I thought that was the best thing ever that she was carrying that. Not only yeah, not awesome. only does he come out to do the fake pop with them, but they also have his belt. That's great. Uh, Godfather does his intro. Jeff Jarrett then gets on the mic and says, "I don't know who you think you are, pimp and hose. I don't know who you think you are, <laughs> but when a and two-time hose. IC ch- yeah and hose." <laughs> When a two-time IC champ has a match and the, with the current IC champion and it isn't a title match, that pisses me off. Well, Huggy Bear, you say you're all that, and you say pimping ain't easy. Well, defending that title ain't easy either. <laughs> Tonight, let's find out how hung you are, pimp. Put up the title for grabs. <laughs> and God, Godfather agrees. He says, well... If you want to shot at the title, it's fine with me. But if I win, then Deborah's got to come aboard the ho train and be one of the Godfather's finest hoes and gets big fucking pop. And Jared fucking agrees. He's like, all right, whatever. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Godfather's outfit is crazy here. He works the whole match with his shirt on. <laughs> it's like a blue shirt with the yeah, it's, not, yeah. it's not usual. Like usually he comes out with the vest and then takes it off mm-hmm. and works. But this is like a blue silky fucking shirt here. Uh, and he just works the whole match in it. Eventually, Val Venus comes out doing the licking his thumb thing, yeah. and he, he goes to talk <laughs> to Deborah. Nicole Bass comes out and goes for Deborah because of Val Venus talking to Deborah. Val backs away up the ramp. In the meantime, Godfather rolls up Jeff Jarrett and gets the win. So Deborah is officially a part of the Ho Train. I thought that they like I for some reason in my mind I thought I remembered her like coming out with them one time, but maybe, maybe I made that up. They do. I don't know. Maybe. But. Well, sadly, it doesn't... Well, I guess, maybe not sadly. It's probably for the best that she doesn't own the hoe train. Uh, but <laughs> never seems like a fi- uh, fine lady. Uh, yeah. Owen stops this from happening. Owen comes out and snatches up Deborah and takes her to the back before she can get into the ring. And Godfather is not happy about this. And JR says, Owen and Jared are getting Deborah to hoeless ground. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, Vince is still waiting by the Loading Bay Hotel parking lot, Mandalay Bay, Green Bay, Wisconsin. No Undertaker. He's not to be found. We go to another promo here. It is Meat. WWF's Meat is here with Jacqueline and Terry Runnels with Mark Henry's music playing. Oh, it's sexual, baby. Whoa. Did Mark Henry not use this yet? Or Mark was he Henry done using this? Was he not sexual chocolate yet? When did Mark Henry become sexual chocolate? This is after that, so... I, but I don't believe Meat comes out to this song, does he? No, it's just I think it was just used for the backstage stuff. Why did they just fucking flip his song like this? Unless you think it's dubbed. 
Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. You're probably right. Maybe if someone can find out for us, uh, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, Mark Henry theme playing this is oh, very Oh, yeah, jarring. that makes more sense than yeah, that. They probably just so had too. like a regular song and they just had to dub it over. And Meats is here and he's in his underwear. It's not like just gear. It's like just, it's like underwear. It's boxers. Not even boxers. It's like, you know, tidy whiteies. But it's pink. underwear gear it was yeah, what Meat used to wear. It was like, them. it was like trunks that look like underwear was like the gimmick. He also was in WrestleMania 2000. Uh, he was. So is Chaz. So is actually this. You know, this era is probably just what WrestleMania 2000 is based on. You're probably right, SummerSlam right. or something. Yeah, yeah. Meat says this meat isn't done until you ladies are completely satisfied. Completely, and Com I mean completely. And I mean <laughs> the completely. Rock. Yeah, and the Rock says <laughs> completely. We go to the ring. It's Bradshaw versus Ken Shamrock. Uh, at Backlash, Bradshaw attacked Shamrock to help Taker beat Shamrock in the shittiest match ever. <laughs> I think we watched that for Patreon as well. Taker and Shamrock from this show. Uh, we did. Fuck that. It it's 20 minutes not, long and it sucks. Fucking hell. Like, man, Shamrock was almost there in the main event. He almost won a title. That That's how I feel like him and Billy Gunn were probably like, they probably could have got there. Shamrock definitely Shamrock could have got there. Shamrock was definitely the guy, with the, especially when he was like Vince McMahon's enforcer, which I think he is around this time. He's just getting out of that, but yeah. Yeah, he was awesome. Uh, Shamrock comes out in a long sleeve shirt and jean shorts with a baseball bat, and then he gets jumped by Farouk, who is wearing a very tight black shirt and fucking black leather pants, <laughs> and gloms him during his entrance. I'm very confused at what's happening here. <laughs> the Acolytes beat up Shamrock. Shamrock's putting up a fight, though. He's double-legged him. He's trying to take him down. Test! My man! Comes out for the save here. Uh, he tries to save Shamrock. Shamrock chases the Acolytes out of the ring and then starts just smashing shit around the ring with his fucking bat. Uh, and then he gets back in the ring and he has a stare down with Test. So this is, again, Test. I believe this is probably very close to the Union. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. They <sighs> form on May 3rd, so it is next week. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's Holy fuck. fuck. Uh, so uh, we go backstage. Shane is walking to the ring preparing for his match with The Rock. Uh, got they the show Croc shirt. The Croc jersey. So we go back to the ring. It is Shane McMahon taking on The Rock. Uh, the, Shane comes out with a tucked in, as Tony said, tucked in the Croc jersey, which is just the Rock's jersey with a C put on it. I I always loved when Shane did that. Uh, I was yeah, big, on the back it says number two BS or something like that's, that. I, the one I remember the most is his WrestleMania 15 one, which was uh, X-Punk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fucking awesome. Shane's nameplate says Shane McMahon with Mean Street Posse, but Shane is alone, but I feel like that was spoiling what happens here. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, you're right. <laughs> they recap what happened early with Shane kicking the rock out of the corporation. Uh, the match starts. Rock is whooping his sh fucking ass immediately. Uh, we don't get too deep into the match before the Mean Street Posse runs out, starts attacking. The Rock is hitting them with rock bottoms. He goes for the people's elbow, but then here comes Triple H over the barricade, gloms Rock from behind. Uh, China comes down the ramp as Triple H is stomping him out. He hit. Is this, by the way, no DQ? Uh, don't know. Ref's discretion. <laughs> God damn it, Tony! No! <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't say it. I don't think it's no DQ. Well, no. Triple H is whooping the Rock's ass big style in front of the fucking ref, so I'm assuming no DQ. Triple H hits him with a pedigree, slapping him around. China starts fucking kicking Rock's ass. The refs come down to try to stop it, but to no avail because they're getting pushed in each corner and everyone's whooping the Rock's ass. The posse and Shane are stopping the refs, and Triple H just whoops his ass, and then the segment ends. So, a lot okay. of heat here for uh, the corporation. We go backstage, and Vince is still waiting for The Undertaker at the Loading Bay Park not GTA. Not backstage. This isn't the same arena. It's not the same arena. It's Sorry, not you're right. It's not Excuse the Loading. Because <laughs> they have. That's right. Because it's not the it's, same building. Because they had to get Vince away from the building. It's definitely not from every arena they've ever been in. Ever, <laughs> it's definitely but... not this building. You're right. Sorry. No, about definitely that. not. <laughs> well, Vince, I uh, get. I guess gets a little fed up here, and he leaves. He just he walks leaves off. With, yeah. Leaves with his briefcase. Then we go to a shot. The Ministry begin dragging Stephanie out from a random backstage fucking chain link area. Uh, Taker is there in his cloak. Paul Bear is there too. Uh, Viscera goes, bah ha ha ha, and then they start dragging her. <laughs> he just the laughs the entire time. Oh, I thought it was Paul Bear first, but I rewind it. No, Viscera, bah ha ha ha. Everyone's <laughs> real serious, and Viscera's just back there, bah ha ha ha. <laughs> So the Ministry are dragging Stephanie around backstage as it's all going on. In the meantime, X-Pac has promo. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> X-Pac comes to the ring, and he grabs the mic. And X-Pac says, Kane, I've been looking all over the building for you, man. And I don't know what your problem is, but you're either with me or you're against me. 
get your big red ass out here and we're gonna sell this right now <laughs> well he doesn't get that he gets Owen and Jarrett because they jump Xbox from behind because they I'm assuming want the tag team titles so fuck you Xbox sure yeah Glom Xbox from behind they're stomping him out and the lights go out and here comes Kane. Kane comes out. Jared and Owen do not. I love this, by the way. Kane does his slow walk to the ring, and Jared and Owen do not stop stomping out X Pac. No, I love that. Of course not. Beat the crap out of him. That's like such a wrestling thing. Oh, like especially like ECW Sandman. Sandman's music was hit. Six minutes later, he's in the ring. Everyone had to stop doing what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kane gets in the ring. He attacks Owen and Jeff. Choke slams Jared. Uh, X Pac gets up. He says, What's your goddamn problem, man? And he shoves him. And then Kane chug slams him. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. Fuck you, man. Uh, and then Kane puts his hands on his hips as he's going to leave. And he looks back at X Pac and he's, he's guess he's feeling a little guilt here. So he rolls X Pac out, throws him over his shoulder, his music hits, and he carries X Pac to the back. Which, a uh, nice little character progression yeah, here for. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Get your big red ass out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so the lights go out as JR and Cornette are talking. And you know what time it is. Ah, Timberlake. Yeah, let's Tony, go. you tell him. Let's go. The ministry come out carrying the Undertaker symbol. Please make sure you note this symbol, not cross, I just want to mention this whole Raw is built, like, uh, historically around the Black Wedding. Yes, but not advertised. Didn't advertise it. Uh, wasn't no, not advertised. Like, they don't even tease it, really. They don't say no. anything that Undertaker is going to have a wedding or they're doing any kind of wedding thing, which is interesting because I feel like wedding stuff usually pops ratings. Yeah, but the like, build of this show was Vince McMahon waiting in a parking garage. What a, what a build. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to draw oh the ratings. Oh, my God, he's going to give Undertaker a briefcase. You're right. That's I didn't even think that's of that. That's going to draw ratings, and then we have meat and be really clean. What the hell they got going on over here? Uh, so Ministry come out carrying the Undertaker symbol. The symbol. The symbol. He trapped, she strapped on a symbol. They put the symbol in the ring. Stephanie is crying. Uh, JR says, you know, there's there's nobody that's been a bigger fan of the Undertaker than JR, but by God, those days are over. This is not right. And they lean the symbol on the ropes. I was horrified of this. I thought the ropes were going to snap. Bro, they they, uh, they were going over that a million times trying to get it exactly correct. They had to reposition a ton of times, right? Dude, I I was also worried about it. Like It was top-heavy, and it would flip over, and Fucking, she would just be Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking give herself a tombstone. <laughs> yeah, she'd be flip over. Holy shit, that would suck. One thing I miss about uh, this era of wrestling is... There was, without a doubt, anytime lights were out and Undertaker was out there, you were getting lasers shined on the Undertaker's Holy fucking yeah, face. Hell yeah. <laughs> Red lasers everywhere. So Taker's here, the Ministry is here, Paul Bear is here. They got Stephanie set up on the symbol. It's laying on the ropes in the ring. And Taker says, before the ceremony begins, I must address the McMahon <laughs> family. Shitty Taker promo time. <laughs> oh, great. I am not to blame for what is about to happen. Vince, this rests upon your shoulders because you did not live up to your end of the agreement. And Steve Austin, well, I guess he just showed his true colors as well. Oh, oh. fuck. No, <laughs> shut up. You could have ended it. Up. You should have just edited it with you did not live up to your agreement. That was it. Stone Cold, that's fine. The learning Paul, tree. Paul, <laughs> let the ceremony begin. Undertaker's music is playing during all of this, by the way. Which uh, is kind of cool. It's kind of yeah, It is kind of cool. It's a uh, little weird feeling. Uh, Stephanie's screaming no. Crowd's chanting for Austin. And then Paul Barry goes into his spiel. Uh, this is also Tony Khan, so whatever you want to do. <laughs> Dearly and beloved, we gather here this evening to adjoin Stephanie McMe McMe Marie McMahon and the unholy wedlock with the Lord of Darkness. Tonight, Stephanie Marie McMahon will step from the light. This is a shitty promo, too. On this yeah. evil cesspool moral world into the <laughs> sanctuary of eternal darkness. <laughs> Fucking hell. Keeping this in mind, will you, Stephanie Marie McMahon, accept the purity of evil and take the Lord of Darkness as your master and your spouse? And Stephanie says, fucking no. She says, no, no. no. Like always. And All right, let's go. Let's keep going. JR <laughs> says, hell no, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> so Shamrock runs out in the same outfit he had earlier with the baseball bat. Acolytes immediately grip him up and Viscera splashes him. It was like so that, seamless. That was fantastic. He slides in. They, one grabs his arm, one grabs grab his legs, him. and then yeah. splash. That was sick. Sweet. Take a continue ball. Uh, backstage, the corporation wants to run out there to help, but Shane says, no, no, we are not going out unless it gets bad. Chill out. Which, as you may know, is uh, some foreshadowing there. 
Paul Bearer says, do you allow Stephanie to bear your offspring? And Taker says, <laughs> real weird, I do. <laughs> like, like, like weird head turn, too. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, weird yeah. fucker. Big Show then comes out and starts jumping the ministry. They jump him back. Undertaker grabs Shamrock's bat, which was another sweet setup that they did. That was a pretty awesome setup. Because I was like, where did he fucking get that bat from? I was like, oh, Shamrock. Uh, Taker grabs it and fucking bumps Big Show over the top rope, kills him. He's gone. Uh, Barrett continues, By the power invested in me by the Lord of Darkness, I now pronounce you as the unholy union of darkness. You may now kiss your bride! And take her- I remember this vividly, because that might be in some of his trons. He pops the fucking hood with the eyes rolled back, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. fucking glass shatters. The fucking place loses it. Dude, Austin, I got chills when Dude, I loved it. it. I was like, this is so stupid, but it's so sick. I vividly <laughs> remember the line that they say here on commentary, because they say it a couple times here when they get down to it. Uh -huh. Well, you keep going, but- uh, You as can say, I, what, where is, is it here, or is it later? It's when, uh, after Austin comes in and does okay. what he does. You so Austin runs him. down. He is a house of goddamn fire here. He hits a crazy ass clothesline on Midian on the ramp, <laughs> rolls through, gets back up, gets in the ring. Him and Taker are throwing bombs at each other. Midian gets back in for the save. Austin whips his ass. Enough time for Taker to just so nonchalantly get out of the ring, which is awesome too. Stunner to Midian. He fucking grabs a chair, the most reckless chair shots ever to Bradshaw and Farouk, just full head shots killing him. <laughs> he gets out of the ring, this is so unnecessary, he gets out of the ring just to hit Viscera in the head with a chair. <laughs> that was fantastic. Dude, he gets back in the point. ring, chair shot to Midian, throws Midian out of the ring, and then it's him and Stephanie on the symbol in the ring. He stares at her, and he walks over, and he starts untying her from the symbol. And this yeah. is where they say on commentary, they go, uh, I think Cornette starts with it, but then Jim Ross takes over. That's sure. why I always remember Jarrett's version of it. He goes, he didn't do it for the love of Vince McMahon. He did it because it was the right thing. It was the right thing. Yes. And I then forgot. Jim, yeah. And then JR goes, he did it because it was the right thing to do. And I always remember that line. They probably played it like a million times recapping this, but it's so crazy. Like, like as silly as it is, like, I love this. <laughs> like, this is like one of my favorite angle, like segments ever, just cause like, Everything is dead. Undertaker and the Ministry are about to fucking do some crazy ass shit here. This is fucked up shit. Their Ministry is on top of the world, killing everybody. The only fucking person that can save anything is the one dude that refuses to do it because fuck Vince McMahon, he's a bitch. And then he comes out and he saves the day and he saves Stephanie and it's awesome. It's awesome. It was awesome, man. And then uh, so Austin unties Stephanie here. And then Stephanie gives Stone Cold a hug, but Stone Cold he, does. He does not arms hug her up. back. He does <laughs> arms up like what the fuck. This was like the. It's like a classic visual here. Like he didn't want to do it, and he's like, no. "Why is she hugging me?" But he did it because it's the right thing. It was fucking sweet though. It was. It was such a good visual, man. Like, yeah. Playing it back, like this was probably one of those perfect uh, angles here. Where it they really is. Set it up and then paid off with Stone Cold making the save. And so she hugs Austin. He doesn't hug her back. Vince comes. Get, gets in the ring. I don't know where he must have. He ran from the loading. <laughs> <laughs> From the hotel. <laughs> he gets in the ring, big hug with Stephanie, and then this is another thing that I remember forever is it, it's not on mic, and they almost don't catch it, but it's over Stephanie's shoulder as Vince is hugging her. Uh, you can see Vince mouthing thank you to Austin, and Austin just staring at him. It's thank like you. thank you, perfect fucking shot, man. Uh, per crowd's losing it. Uh, very fucking cool uh, ending to the show. And uh, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's I don't they didn't have it here, but I, so I don't know wh uh, where I saw this, but I know there's a post show here where Austin is drinking beer and surfing on the symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's God. awesome. It was this one. Oh, yeah. Shit. I'm because I remember it being set up like that. So unless it was <sighs> another, let's see. Maybe it's this. Yeah, it is here. Here, I'll send it to you. Uh, if you want to look for it on on uh, YouTube, uh, the Stone video Cold is symbol. Stone Cold Surfing on Undertaker symbol after the show. Uh, raw okay. exclusive off air footage. Uh, it's Vince is hugging Stephanie some more. Uh, they leave together. Then you see Austin get in the ring. <laughs> the symbol is still there. Austin rolls in, gets two beers, stands on the symbol. It looks like he's going to die. Gets back on the symbol. Double guzzle of the beer on the symbol. <laughs> so sick. What the hell? This guy's a maniac.
He's the best ever. He leaves, comes back, does it again. <laughs> Stone Cold is the that's fucking man. That's incredible. I did not see this. I've yeah. never seen this before. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Oh, this you know what? Class- I, it wasn't on Peacock. I remember this because they showed it on WWE 24-7, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, it says Classics, Classics on, on Demand. demand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, wow. But fucking, this is a extremely Attitude Era show. Like, very Attitude Era. I don't even know Deep if I can tell you what was missing. There, yeah. You got The Rock, you got DX, you got The Corporation, you got The Ministry, you got Austin, uh, K- I mean, you, you got bullshit, Meat you know. and Beaver Cleavage. Meat, you know. Beaver Cleavage, Mr. Ass, you got all the, the hoes, this is like you got Deborah. Extremely got Attitude Era, yeah. Uh, so, it's, I don't know, I can't say if I liked or disliked the episode. It's an all-timer ending angle, so... Uh, I'll give that. <laughs> I, I love that. The shit. build up to the ending was satisfying, you know. So that I think was so too. It is but funny anyway, that you how you put it though is that the build up to the show they didn't tell anybody what it was. It was just Vince in a fucking. No, if you were in knowing, like, what is the tagline for this? Oh, I guess it's like Fallout from Backlash. I guess. But yeah, pretty much. Sense. Yeah, that would get people to tune. But if you in, tuned yeah. in like on hour two, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> I don't know you. It, well, they they left because Stone Cold was the man back then. So you sure. you were left with what is Stone Cold gonna do? You yeah, know, kind of thing. So maybe true. Stone Cold, but yeah, they definitely wasn't expecting a wedding when you tune in for this. No, one. 